Julep, pop, 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 julep, pop, 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 pop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove these uh, reflections from the glasses here. It's a great shot, but um, I want to take the reflections out, and I get asked this a lot. So I'm creating a new path named lenses because what I want to do is outline the lenses uh, along the edge so that I don't have to worry about being super careful uh, when I'm removing the reflections. This just makes it so that I, you know, I can just focus on on the one job and not screw up the glasses when I'm working. Um, you might have heard me talk about, you know, how I think of clipping as sort of taping off the house before you before you start painting. Um, this is something I do a lot because it just anything I can do to keep from having to be any more careful than I have to be. Uh, that to me is time well spent. So I'm setting the um, width of the path a little bit bigger so, so it'll be easier to see on screen. So you might notice that I'm using a slightly different technique than you might be used to to uh, create these paths. Um, I call this my two pass technique and I find it really so much better for uh, for outlining sort of regular shapes like like circles or ovals uh, because I can almost never get the the initial points and handles right and I'll show you this is this is the way you might expect it to be done and the way I might have done it you know in the past when I wasn't quite so uh, experience with the pen tool and I didn't know that I could save a lot of pain and headache by doing it a different way. Um, so everything's, you know, looking good and pretty close up until right about now. You see that little, that little warble that I'm going to try to fix there. It turns out that that's kind of hard because to get that to be really smooth, I need that to be perfectly smooth. And so my corrections end up messing up the other parts of the path in a way that that's super annoying so um that's that's why i always use the two pass technique I'll, I'll just drop points hard angle points along the edge of the object uh like you saw me do on the previous lens and then fix those it almost is always an easier job to fix that kind of path rather than what you just saw me fix so I got these clipped out. Good. And I'm going to open up Tone Lab and start my new separation. So that's too much. I'm going to bring it down. I still want to see a good amount of the eye details in in this tone layer that maybe maybe a little bit yeah it looks good so now jumping into workspace I'm gonna load that selection that I just made from those paths um, and just put it on the whole tone lab because I just want to work on those those areas right now. So I'm going to turn off texture because I, I just want to get started working on the tone. I'm going to show you why I use this method because most people, you know, think they have to clone an eye from someplace else and that can be almost impossible. But using using this method on the tone layer um, and I turn the image sometimes uh, holding down just the R key just to just to get it at an angle that's more suited to my hand because I'm basically just going to be smearing 
some of the existing pixel information. So it's not quite illustration per se, but it's it's kind of like that. I'm basically just trying to imagine, you know, what it would look like with those with those reflections gone and just trying to match the color that would be there even generally it doesn't have to be perfect but just dragging the color as opposed to you know making some kind of hand illustration which you know that'd be really hard to do Th this makes it just easy So I'm just focusing on on tone right now because I want to get that underlying tonal area uh, just to at least start there, get that right or generally right. And you know I'm using my soft round pressure size to to work on that. It's a really smooth brush, so I'll, I'll probably jump back into yeah maybe this tone pusher brush because. I want to bring maybe a little bit of texture into that area just a bit just to give it some kind of life on the on the tone layer I'm gonna crank up the flow a little bit but you see it just brings a little bit more life back in I'm not even really reshaping much I'm just trying to get a little texture back in there so Oops, I just, um, you know, I'm going to use, um, use Tone Lab Workspace, switch, switch my layers, and occasionally I forget to do that, but it's so much faster and easier just to use the workspace. So I'm cloning on my texture layer, and you can see now, like, the job that I have to do on texture isn't really a big job. It's literally trying to add texture into those areas where where that reflection had removed, you know, blocked out any any texture visually. So I'm just trying to find places that I can clone from and continue some of those some of those lines. I mean, you can see if I was trying to do this on an image with, um, you know, that I didn't separate into tone and texture, it would be a huge problem. So I can try different areas of texture to clone from, but you know, yeah, so I gotta kind of clone from similar similar tonal areas in the image. Um, otherwise the you know texture from really bright parts over that dark part is gonna show up uh, too strong. And so I mean that that's not bad. That took me what five minutes. Um, and I mean, I could spend more time making it super perfect, but I think if you didn't know that a reflection was removed from that area, you, you wouldn't notice. Um, you could get away with that. So I'm trying this, um, this technique, because what I do see is a little bit of discoloration above the eyelid there. Um, so I just added a layer and clipped it on to texture and and I'm sampling the color on my brush that layer is set to color and I'm just going to see if I can paint in a little bit of the existing skin tone to reduce that blueness that was there and I mean it's a light touch but that pretty much that pretty much fixes that you can see before and after Okay, now to tackle the tough one. This one's a lot harder because a lot more of the eye detail is um, is obstructed, but I'm gonna use the same method I used on the previous eye, and now that I've got that other eye uh, pretty much together, I, see, I wanna do that. I wanna get at least one component together because I might I might even clone from that later. We'll see how it goes. But you know, this is the method for just just drag the pixel information 
around to sort of generally sculpt the tone. I mean, this is, you know, this is a lot like what you would do with traditional oil paint or something is, you know, just get it on the canvas and push it around until, until you get the, the larger shapes uh, defined in your composition. There, it's no different here. Um, except you're not, you know, you're not starting with a blank white canvas, which is, which is terrifying, but you know, you have, you have reference to work with here. Um, if you just sort of, you know, you're just imagining mimicking that, um, that general shape of the eye, uh, and the anatomy, you can usually get pretty close and surprising what you can pull off uh, just using this method and it you know really I think demonstrates really well what our photographs are, are actually made up of you know I'm zooming out here to get to get a little bit of a higher level view see where I'm at um, you know our photographs are just honestly made up of these two main qualities, which is tonal information and textural information. Uh, and, you know, I've always said, said just approaching any retouching job you have to do with that in your mind, you're, you're, you're really setting yourself up to find, I, I think, easier, more flexible solutions for for things that might at first even even seem impossible Now, what I want to do here is keep keep shaping this eyelid. I'm gonna um, I just sampled some of the just some of the color from the other eyelid because I know, you know that that's probably what a what a reflection might look like. Um, oh, my brush this whole time was set to darken, but um, all right, fix that. Now I can add a little bit of a highlight and. Yeah, I think that that highlight there is, is kind of wrong. That should be more, that should be darker. So I'm gonna darken that down. I think one of the things to remember when, when you're doing this kind of quasi illustration work is just to not render too much on the tone. Like don't try to be too illustrational, keep it loose and keep it, um, you know, keep it, keep it so you can see those brush strokes because honestly on the tone layer, that's, that's really what's happening. And then, once you get some believable texture in on top of the tone, it's like 
it hides it hides so much of the fakeness it's really that the quality that that is giving us the, the feeling like that this is real um, has so much to do with the texture the texture is the element that that just makes us believe it that you know this wasn't like retouched or or repainted so sometimes I will use my clone source whatever you call it it, it basically reverses my clone direction so watch what happens it's, I'm not cloning from the right part exactly you're, you're able to see a lot but when I go with the brush to the right my sample source it goes the other direction so that's what happens when you click that little left arrow uh, button in clone source same thing with the vertical one that's up there um, so I'm just going bit by bit and you know you can see once I remove some of the texture it sort of revealed a little bit of mistake on the on the top of the the eye there. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to find places to sample texture that that works. That worked nicely. So I'm going to go back in and do a little bit more work on the tone and you know this is kind of the game is just going back and forth between the two just taking steps steps in the right direction um,
All right, so I'm going back in there with this uh, this textured brush tip, and I'm gonna just do a little bit more shaping on the tone. But not much. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty well together. I mean, that was man, right at like 20 minutes where you know, in the past, you know, that would have that would have just terrified me. I would have, you know, lots of situations would have said, no, that can't happen. I, or go s searching for stock photos that somebody has, you know, eyes that could match or something like that. But, you know, just using those basic techniques of, of pushing what's already there around to create the shape and then covering it up, covering up, you know, anything that doesn't look real with believable texture, that and that to me, that's so much easier than trying to find something to clone. Cool, I'm pretty happy with that. So now you can see how it's not impossible to remove reflections like that from, uh, you know, from glass or any reflective surface where where there's something something behind it, um, just by dragging the pixels around.